let's move on uh, to the week that has been for President Donald Trump. We'll bring in Rick Newman now for the latest Trumpometer score. Um, so, Rick, we've talked uh, over the last couple of weeks about kind of the difficulty, I think, in judging um, this particular outbreak with uh, the context of what we wanted the Trumpometer to do, which was measure Donald Trump's economic policies and how they changed economic behavior here in the U.S. But this morning, uh, another startling number on initial jobless claims. We've now had uh, about 15 million people file for unemployment insurance in just the last three weeks. Um, what's the Trumpometer telling us this week about uh, where things stand in the U.S. economy? Well, we've got uh, the stock market up nicely, about uh, 10%, it looks like, so far this week. Uh, so this, the market apparently is optimistic about some kind of breakthrough coming uh, in the relatively near future. However, uh, terrible news on jobs, as you point out, and uh, this market rally is pretty flimsy. This could be a bear market trap, as we've been discussing all week. Uh, a couple other things I'm watching, Mild. First of all, um, the economy now depends on an urgent public health response. It's, right now, it's not about economic factors. It's about public health measures. And there is still no plan from the Trump administration for reopening the economy. Uh, we've talked about this so many times, but we have to keep repeating it. We need massive widespread testing for the coronavirus. We need antibody tests and many other things in place before businesses can reopen and people can get back to work. And we're just not seeing it. So. Uh, there's been there have been several uh, sad readings on the Trumpometer during the last uh, few weeks. That's the lowest level. He's ticking up one notch this week, merely failing. But I think we could have some bad news coming in future weeks. Yeah, I think Rick, it's going to be really interesting here to watch. Um, and you know, some people I've talked to in the market, they think that the next two weeks is when there's a handoff, as it were, from the market focusing on um, the coronavirus data, which you know, as Anjali outlines, is is still startling, but but getting relatively better in the U.S. And a firm handoff to how much we react to that economic data, because you know, Powell was asked about it this morning, and he kind of punted on the question. But it's something we've discussed here almost every day, which is um, on the other side of of this reopening. I mean, we're still in recession, right? And there's still a really long way to go. And you don't just reopen and everyone runs back out and, and makes up those trillions of dollars in lost activity we're going to see in April and May. I'm, puzzer, I'm puzzled uh, about what makes uh, investors so optimistic. Uh, you know, we haven't had second quarter earnings yet. We're going to start reading at bank earnings next week and a bunch of earnings after that. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be first quarter earnings and they're going to be down. But, you know, second quarter earnings are still three months away and they're going to be dreadful. Uh, and I just don't understand how investors bidding up stocks think businesses are going to reopen uh, and people are going to go back to work. I mean, flattening the curve does not mean it's safe to go outside. I mean, you've got to you've got to press that curve all the way down to the floor almost before business businesses can reopen. And we're talking about it. But to my I'm not seeing it. Uh, I'm not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel that Trump says he is seeing. I just need to know. What is going to persuade people to go back to work when uh, everybody knows uh, it's the virus is still out there? We haven't done anything about it. Is wearing a mask going to be good enough? Is more uh, hand washing going to be good enough? I just don't think so. So I'm, I, I remain pessimistic. I think we still have to get over a major hump here. And Rick, one thing that has been made clear in my mind is that local officials matter more than ever before. Perhaps people who didn't even pay attention to what their governor had previously said seem to be tuning into daily live streams, daily updates. When you think about how important Trump's rhetoric actually is at this point, even Nikki Haley was penning an op-ed in the New York Times, I think yesterday, saying, you know, the attention should actually be put on all of your local governors, because this is very much, um, you know, a city by city, state by state thing. We know that the state of California actually declared a national emergency, I think a week and a half before Trump even did. So how vital is, is Trump's rhetoric here, even in terms of getting businesses back open? Uh, it's a great point because Trump does not have the authority to reopen anything except the, the federal government. He cannot order states and cities to allow businesses to reopen. That's up to governors and mayors, and it's up to the businesses themselves, and it's up to employees. So uh, you've got, I, you know, look at what, look at the map of what's happening in the United States. So we're getting close to a peak of infections and deaths in places like uh, New York, where many of us are, and in New Orleans and Detroit and some big cities, but it's just starting to pop up in some smaller cities and also in some rural areas. So we're, we're, we're going to have these cascading closures. Um, and even when it is OK for some businesses to go back to work, I mean, it's going to start very, very gradually at first. And um, I mean, what's it going to take to reopen restaurants? I mean, um, 
this, just, just a, a question for normal people in cities. When are you going to go uh, feel comfortable going back to restaurants and sitting next to people and not jumping off your chair when you hear somebody cough? Yeah, those trendy so it's, be, it's a long ways long off. <laughs> Uh, I know that all I do when I watch television now is I remark at how close everyone is standing to each other because it's still jarring. And I, and I, I wonder how long that's going to go on for um, at a minimum. Well, think about this. What does everybody do now when you hear somebody cough? You go and you look around to see how close that person is to you. I mean, I would I, I would even say this, Rick, like I don't. I don't hear anybody cough because I'm not around anybody. So <laughs> like, we need to first be comfortable being in the vicinity of another human who isn't someone that lives in our home. And then we can start worrying about what it's like when they cough, which and to your point, I don't imagine it's going to be like a, a not jarring, disturbing experience. But yeah, um, so we've been, we've been through this many times, but it bears repeating until we get there. Uh, we need massive, massive testing and very concerning. The Trump administration indicated this week that it actually wants to get out of federal testing and turn it all over to the states and to the cities. I don't think that is the right way to go. And I don't think that those states have the uh, capacity to do that as well, because they, as per our previous discussion with Brian Chung, they play by fiscal restraints. The federal government um, does not. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.